Here now, Fox and Friends weekend co-host Pete Hexeth, and for the first time on the bottom line, Outkick founder Clay Travis is with us. We have a great kickoff to the A Block. Pete, I'm going to come to you first. So, listen, I'm surprised by all the information flow that comes out about Joe Biden and his team. Is this going to have any impact on Joe Biden, the campaign, or his team? You wonder if the drip, 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 now that you're getting to officials who are on the record having to own up to what they did, whether eventually it may add up alongside what's happening with Hunter. When you look at this, this was basically a Democrat CAA PSYOP against a candidate. It, it was a PSYOP against the American people yep. to discredit him. For, all the way from Merrick Garland to Blinken to former CIA directors, they had that laptop for a year. They knew that. So the question is, it's almost more back at you. Like, how does Congress connect? That's the only avenue we really have, connect the dots and create a case that can't be ignored by the media and can't be ignored by the Justice Department. Clay can answer that. Uh, I, look, I think they certainly have to put the case together because this was so orchestrated to build on what Pete's saying. Remember they said it had all the hallmarks right. of yeah. Russian disinformation. They didn't say it was Russian disinformation. They actually said it had all the hallmarks. And then Biden, it allowed him to cite that on October 22nd in the last uh, debate and claim, oh, this is all a bunch of malarkey. It would probably be a Biden word there. And the reality is all of it's coming together, and the data reflects that if the Hunter Biden story had been covered accurately by the media, allowed to be distributed on social media, Donald Trump would have won, even with all the other craziness that went on in 2020. So you talk about what the impact was. This decision and their cover-up put Joe Biden in the White House. And I think it comes back to the media, and I bring this up all the time, Pete. Um, the media doesn't report these stories. A lot of Americans still believe that Donald Trump colluded with Russia. Yes. We, know, we know it's false, but uh, the media never reported that. They reported the, the, the fake story, never the truth. Here, will they ever hear the truth about what Joe Biden did if... ABC, NBC, CBS, MSNBC, CNN, never report it. Not only will they not, but it's already baked in. We're doing a segment. I'm doing Jesse Waters Primetime tonight. We've got a guy that did a report on textbooks. The textbooks high school yeah. seniors are reading today are already spinning the stuff that we know is untrue as truth. Unbelievable. I mean, it gets baked in all the way down the pipeline. There's no incentive for them to redact it. They, ha they feel the way they do about Donald Trump, and they won't change it. Right. So you've got to, it's got to be a smoking financial gun, which they may have on Hunter at some point in the connections to the family. But in the, in the narrative world, they'll never admit it. Well, this is why there is now a rush, whether this meeting was set up weeks ago or not, a <laughs> yeah, rush right. to button up the investigation by the DOJ of Hunter Biden. Because again, it's, again, seal it up so nobody writes about mm -hmm. it, put it to bed, despite the fact for months there's been discussion that the prosecutors were ready to bring a case, ready to bring charges, four charges in all, including the gun case, which should have been brought five years ago. Two audacious things that you can't help but admire its ridiculousness. One, Hunter Biden took the state visit to Ireland <laughs> with his dad. Yeah. I mean, that's unbelievable. And two, he's suing the laptop repairman somehow for what, accurately disseminating his actual information? Anybody who's ever looked at any of this stuff on this laptop, you couldn't have faked it, right? They, or they had somebody pretend to be Hunter Biden dancing around smoking crack in his underwear. I mean, this would have been uh, one of the hallmarks of uh, all-time Russian disinformation, <laughs> yes. right? This, this is the case in point of, of the death of shame in America. But let's, let's move on because Joe Biden signed an executive order today to make the government focus more on inflation? No. Crime? Nope. Environmental justice? Bingo. One of our top priorities to better understand and prevent environmental and toxic exposures. If we do that, we know, we know we can save and extend millions of lives. So surely that includes East Palestine, right? Yeah, um, can you say what this environmental justice announcement will mean, if anything, for the, for the people in East Palestine, Ohio? Look, I think what's important to note uh, about uh, this uh, environmental justice EO is the president's continued support uh, in his climate agenda. Uh, his ambitious climate agenda, he has the, the most ambitious climate ag agenda than any other president uh, in history. This lowered our standard of living. It's been 78 days since that train derailment, an entire community rocked by the biggest ecological disaster in recent U.S. history. Yet, as Clay pointed out, Biden found time to spend nearly a week in Ireland, but not one hour in East Palestine, which is driving distance from Washington. Who wants it? Because I'm... 
<laughs> Pissed off. Pete. Well, they only choose. I mean, it's just like Nashville, Clay. Yeah. I mean, they're they've announced that they're meeting with the three legislators who were expelled and then brought back, but not with the Christian families who were the victims of that attack. Right. They choose the ones they want to talk about. And in this particular case, I, I, I think it could be overstated, but it might. The fact that Biden's announcing his reelection soon, or they think so. The, there's rumors of that, and he's taking on the green. Uh, maybe RFK Jr., who's even more of a greenie than him. Announcing and pushing could be a part of why they're doing even more of this, because he's got to lay things at the altar of the climate zealots if he wants to. You know what's wild? I mean, you watch. Biden can't even read that basic statement. They're putting him in the aviators to try to make him look cool. It's almost like the, the Seinfeld thing where the guy shows up, you know, with the skateboard, the meme that everybody has. Hey, what's up, kids? Um, but to me, the fact that RFK Jr. has already got 14 percent support, shows that if anybody actually with an audience in the Democrat Party was willing to challenge Biden, I think they would beat him. Because I don't think Biden has supporters. I think there were people who voted against Trump, and that's how Biden ended up president. And two and a half years later, I don't think he's added anybody. No, I don't think he has either. But I would believe that environmental justice, if they actually put action behind their words and their policies. But if you really believe the world is going to end in 10 or 12 years, you would have a massive nuclear American program for energy. You would not be trying to kill fish with turbines. You would, you would, you would park your, your private jet yes. and you would fly commercial. There's a whole bunch of things that you would do if you believe the world was going to end. I mean, I would actually, I would do those things if I was a, a Bill Gates or a John Kerry. They're not doing any of these if things. If you Pete. really believe the world's going to end, Sean, then, then you should, we should invade China and India and shut down all their coal-powered fire, fired power plants because this is a global commons problem. And if they pollute and we stop polluting, we still die. So the, none of it is serious it's, it's at about all. Control. It's about, it's it's about, about control. It's about control of every aspect of our lives from overpopulation to food to what we drive to how we travel uh, because they have a new religion and, and they're but, committed to it. But this is actually not about climate change. This is just about simple pollution. And because of what the Biden administration has done to fight climate change, they have trapped lower income Americans, particularly people of color, in cities because they can't afford to commute and breathe fresh air out in the country. And they ignore environmental disasters like East Palestine, Clay. It, it's just... Fear equals control, control equals power. It's a power grab by AOC and their ilk. Not only that, they have guaranteed our biggest adversaries have far more money because it's not like the demand for oil and gas is diminishing. The money goes to Saudi Arabia, Venezuela. They're still finding ways to get it to Russia. No one, and they all, by the way, are less clean than we are when it comes to producing oil and gas. And I always just like to bring it home. You mentioned the, uh, the lack of giving up the uh, private aircraft. How many people do you know who believe in climate justice who have decided they need to sell their beachfront homes because they're afraid that they're going to be inundated? I'm not seeing a lot of those on the market. Prices aren't going down. That Obama Martha's Vineyard house is it's still, Yeah, it's still doing pretty well. Or the one in Hawaii. I, by the way, if the world's going to end in 12 years, I'm moving to Pete's place in Tennessee. <laughs> but but uh, to mention you, Pete, you, you were talking about Tennessee. The lawmakers are demanding the FBI release the manifesto from the Nashville Covenant Elementary School shooter. Republican Congressman Tim Burchett calling the delay, quote, disappointing. You both are from Tennessee. What's the feeling on the ground that this, this manifesto hasn't been released? You mentioned that more uh, love hasn't been given to the families of the deceased in the Christian school. Well, if this were a white nationalist shooter, it would have been released. Yes. If it was a pro-life activist, it would have been released. If it was a Trump supporter, it would have been released immediately. People who've seen these documents based on reporting say they are a dangerous and dark uh, distillation of the motives of this shooter, uh, which I'm sure the presumption is, well, it would lead to a backlash of anti-trans hate, which is exactly what they said from the beginning. They somehow made the perpetrator the victim yeah. in that group, the victim from the beginning. So the sense is, from where I'm, and Clay, you're close to it too, it's kind of demoralized and resigned to the fact that, like, this happened, the government, the administration clearly doesn't care, and the longer they can hold on to it, the story will go away. They also don't discount what they managed to do. Six innocent people were murdered in cold blood by a trans killer. They turned the story into yeah. a couple of local members of the state house legislature were not in that legislature for a day or two. Mm -hmm. And they made them the victims as opposed to the six people here. And also don't discount a lot of those protesters were chanting seven victims. They were holding up they seven fingers. They were holding fingers. up seven fingers, mm. counting 
the person who had committed this murder and was killed by the thankfully police response but i think this has to come out no one trusts the fbi period yeah. but what i hear from so many people uh, all over the nashville area in the state of tennessee is it's indefensible that this full story isn't out yet and they don't Absolutely. want any discussion or any investigation of radicalization correct online amongst that among community. that community or even asking what medications might this shooter have been on? Yep. What occurred that led to all of this? These are questions that we should honestly be asking. Also, why this school? Yep. Six innocent people at a religious school, yeah. very small school. How did this happen? The fact we still don't know all the details is infuriating and unacceptable. I think you're gonna see a lot of the talking points from left-wing pundits in that, in that uh, document, which is why they don't want to release it. Oh, 100%, I think you're right. Yep. Clay, Pete, by the way, you're, you're doing uh, uh, yep. Jesse we'll Waters tonight? 45 minutes. You have a great guest, my wife, Rachel. So Correct. Join you. <laughs> yes. you also have Congratulations to you guys, by the way. You guys are killing it Thank on you. the show. Thanks yes, for finally sir. joining us, Clay. I'm excited to be here. We're excited to have this you. This is yes. my hug, if oh, I could. Oh, yes, large group hug. Group hug, thank you guys. Yes.